Should the Toronto Maple Leafs trade Travis Dermott? That is one of the toughest questions that I've had to answer all quarantine. Now, but before we get into today's video, I just want to thank you all for all the support. I think we are on 249 subscribers right now as I'm recording the video, so thank you so much. I'm going to hit my goal not even halfway through the month of May, so thank you again. And if we want to feel really good and if we want to do it really well, Let's try and hit 300 subscribers by the end of May. We can do it. So leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and let's talk about Travis Dermott possibly getting traded. <laughs> That's not a good thing to be talking about right now. Travis Dermott was drafted 34th overall in the 2015 draft by the Toronto Maple Leafs. He thrived in his first year in the AHL, scoring 24 points in 59 games. And going into his second AHL season, he got what we now call it the Travis Dermott treatment, meaning 36 or 37 games left into the season. Dermott got called up, played those games, played the playoffs with the Toronto Maple Leafs, which had them lose to the Boston Bruins once again, but then went back down with the Marlies and helped contribute a lot to their Calder Cup run. And you could say very well so that Dermott was one of the best defensemen on that run with the Toronto Marlies to help them secure that Calder Cup. But now, after two more seasons with the Toronto Maple Leafs, he is an RFA and people are talking about whether or not he should be traded. And you know what? We gotta talk about this. We really gotta talk about this. One of the hardest parts to being a fan of an NHL or just any organization of sports in general is that you get to know the players. You get to know them, you get to know how they work, how their personalities are on and off the ice. And this is so hard because I love Travis Dermott. His personality is great. He's great on the ice. He's a pest. He does everything that he needs to do. But if it helps get a better defenseman for the Leafs, you might have to look at trading him, and that's the part that sucks. I don't want him to be traded just because I like him, but if it does help in the long run, then it might as well just happen. But there is a lot of uncertainty going into next season. There's the Lettinen thing. We don't even know if he can play and whether or not he can be good on NHL ice. You also can't forget about the right side thing. If he can't play on the right side, I don't know if he's going to be on the left. But we do know that Travis Dermott has played some right defense in his career. So he needs to probably get a little bit more tested on that. He hasn't been tested by Sheldon Keith at the NHL level with right side defense. So maybe that could be something that could be tried in the future before he gets traded. Before he gets traded. But now we're going to talk about what you all came here for, which was the title of the video. Does Travis Dermott get traded by the Toronto Maple Leafs? I think no. Uh, there's a few reasons why, which we're going to go to right now. We're on the graphic. Number one reason is he's a pest on the Toronto Maple Leafs. And he's one of those players that the Leafs don't have much of. Okay, yeah, we have a few pests on the team, like Kasperi Kapanen. I don't know if you put Jake Muzzin on that list because he's more of a protector of the young guys. He's not really one to get under players' skins. He does it a bit. But he's more of a protector. Like if Austin Matthews was get hit in the head, Jake Muzzin's gonna come and be like, let's go, let's have a fight, let's do it. But I don't know again if you'd put Muzzin under that role of a pest. When you think of the word pest, you usually get into that conversation with Brad Marchand. And that is the role that Travis Dermott plays. He can get under the player skin and he can do it very well. Another reason is he can play on the right side. Babcock has tested him in that role before, putting him on the right. He did well, he did okay, and the Leafs need a player who can play on the right side at this point. And I don't know if Lettinen can do that yet. We all don't know that. So there's no point in risking a trade for Travis Dermott when we don't even know the future of the Toronto Maple Leafs blue line. Also, Dermott did say in an interview when he was put on that right side by Babcock that he doesn't hate it. He doesn't hate the fact that he could play on that right side, and although he's a left shot, he does not mind it. Unlike a few players on the Toronto Maple Leafs who just need to play on the right side, Jake Muzzin or Morgan Riley, what if you get on that right side so we can have a nice defense? Another reason though is Miko Lettinen, and there's a risk of him coming to the NHL and having it not work out, and that's the experiment that Dubas wanted to take. I don't think there's a point in trading Travis Dermott when yes, you have Miko Lettinen who could be a good defenseman, but at this point, 
We have no idea. We have, we have no idea whether or not he can be good on the Leafs. And just to think that, okay, Miko Lettinen is on the team, that makes Travis Dermott expendable. That doesn't really make sense because, again, we haven't seen Lettinen play. We don't know his tendencies. We don't know how good he is in the defensive zone in the NHL. And we need to see that before we make the assumption of let's trade Travis Dermott. And last but not least, on the list of reasons why we need to keep Travis Dermott is he played a key role going into the playoffs before the season was canceled, playing with Justin Hole on that shutdown pairing. Okay, yes, you could say at some times that Dermott did look a little bit stressed out with the puck. He did look a little scared and he may have just not been able to control it at times, but he did also go maybe like five or six games without a goal scored against that line. And especially playing against all the good players on a shutdown roll, it makes him very physical and it also makes him very pesty. I don't know if pesty is a word, but I'm going to use it. It makes him get under the player's skin, like Connor McDavid. He could get under his skin. Maybe Patrice Bergeron, maybe a few other players. And with Dermot there, it helps. Muzzin, again, is a protector. He's not really somebody who gets under the player's skin. Although he can use his body a lot more than Travis Dermott because of his build, I think Dermott would fit better there just to get the star players riled up and just to get them off their game. But now we go to the part of the video where I say to everyone watching, I am not a Toronto Maple Leafs GM. I am not an NHL GM. I'm not even a GM of anything. So you may disagree with this. You may agree with it. I'm not here to argue. Actually, I kind of am here to argue, but still, I'm not the one making the shots. I'm not the one making the rules, so don't get mad at me for having just my opinion. If you do want to get mad at me, I'll call up Jake Muzzin, and he'll give you a little bit of fist running. Let's let's do it. I'm going to call him right now. Hey, Jake. Jake. Yeah. I, I don't have his phone number. If you thought I had his phone number, what, what are we doing here? But to end this all off, though, if Travis Dermott could play on the right side and he can play it well, we keep him. There is no doubt about that. You keep Travis Dermott if he can play on the right side. But if Kyle Dubas can get a trade that brings a better right shot defenseman in terms of just everything, the speed, the skating, the shot, the puck movement, for Travis Dermott and other players, then you pull the trigger, Kyle. You pull that trigger 50 times and we need to get that right shot defenseman. But listen, I'm fine with either or. I'm fine with keeping Travis Dermott, again, because he's a pest, he gets under the player's skin, he's fast, he can move the puck, he's very good at all that. But again, if the Leafs can get a better defenseman for Dermott, plus a few more players, prospects, and maybe a pick, then go for it. There is no way of telling what is going to happen, but I think the Leafs will keep him. I asked on Twitter and a lot of people were like, yes. Then there were a lot of people who said no. It's like a 50-50 here. A lot of people think that yes, he should be traded to get that right shot defenseman. Then there's a lot of people who think no because he's just that good still and they shouldn't give him up yet. But now I wanna know what you think. Do you think Travis Dermott should be traded for that possible right shot defenseman who is very good? Or do you think the Leafs should try and develop him into a left shot right side defenseman? Let me know in the comment section down below. But I think again, no. Do not trade Travis Dermott until you're ready and until you know about Miko Lettinen and how he's playing in the NHL. But we'll see what Kyle Dubas does. We'll see whether or not he gives him a contract because he is an RFA and we'll see whether or not he gets traded in the future. But that is going to be it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, you enjoyed the graphics, all of that, leave a like. If you really enjoyed it and you think Travis Dermott should or should not be traded, hit the subscription button down below and let me know what you think about whether or not he should be traded in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Go Lease, go! Kyle, do not trade Travis Dermott. Okay, actually, if you, if you can get the right shot, yes. Yes, pull that, pull the trigger, but no. No, don't do, yes, no, no, yeah, no, no, okay. Never mind. Just do what you want. I'm not the NHL GM. Thanks for watching.